Hello there, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now if you watch this channel regularly, you will undoubtedly be one of the very increasingly few men who understands the value of dressing well and how it can positively influence your life. But today I'm going to reinforce to you that principle and demonstrate in a number of tips that dressing well can be almost perceived as a superpower in the returns that it can give to your life. But if we think about clothing and its position in society over the generations, perhaps we'll greater understand why it has such a significant part to play in our lives. If we look back in history, for instance, the way that you dressed often denoted your status in a society or indicated the sort of job that you were likely to do. So if we look, for instance, at um, royalty, royals, the, the colour associated with royalty is purple and it was only royal people of the royal blood who wore purple garmentry. It set them apart from everybody else. I think going back to that time there was the, uh, the, the material used for dyeing items purple was so valuable that it could only be purchased by people of such vaulted status as the royal family. Hence purple being the royal colour. When it came to uh, perhaps even more recently you know, you would see men uh, going to work in London or in provincial towns and cities wearing bowler hats, suits, carrying a briefcase and an umbrella. And you could almost guess that they worked in the finance sector. Perhaps they were bank managers, accountants. Perhaps they worked uh, as civil servants in government jobs. You could tell by the way that they dressed, what their profession was. In fact, even today in society, we refer to the type of jobs that people do by the colour of the collar of their shirts. You know, if I was to say you were uh, working in a white collar job, it would indicate that you were perhaps management or a senior leader or you worked in a profession like a doctor or, uh, you know, a, a scientist because if you wore a white shirt, it meant that your shirt wasn't going to get dirty in the process of your job, so you could wear white. If you were a blue collar worker, it means that your job is likely more physical, manual, and you're likely to get grubby in the process of doing your job. So you wear a shirt color which is more likely to hide that, that dirt on your clothing. Sadly, in the modern era, comfort clothing or athleisure wear has now achieved ascendancy over being well-dressed. The vast amount of the population tend to wear simple, elasticated clothing because it's more comfortable. And we have definitely stepped away from dressing to impress. We now dress merely for comfort and ease. And even if we look into uh, you know, jobs which previously would have seen the best dressed men, chief executive officers of you know, uh, successful companies. Today, you know, they're famous for the fact that they do not wear collars and ties. They now wear t-shirts and jeans. And I think this has been a trendsetter. It has led the path for more and more men and women, but you know, we're talking about men today in the way that they dress. You know, because more people work from home, the comfort of their home. So they think that you know, putting on a polo shirt is actually dressing up because they step away from wearing a t-shirt. So that's kind of the era that we are operating in today as well-dressed men. So before I give you my, my tips to uh, why I think that it's important to dress well and, and why it is a superpower. The reason why I thought about this video today was an event or two events which happened to me in the last week or so. Uh, and it really made me think of the value of dressing well. Now, on one day last week, I was going out for a couple of meetings in different parts of my local area and different towns. And it was a cool sort of uh, spring day. So I put a three-piece suit on. 
simple three-piece suit. It's quite a nice three-piece suit, nothing fancy, but one I often wear when I need to be a little warmer because it's quite thick material. So anyway, I was visiting the historic city of Bath for a professional purpose, and as I walked through the high street, I encountered a group of three men walking towards me. Now, they were men, I would guess, in their 60s, maybe early 70s. They were not well dressed themselves, but uh, they were directly in my path on the pavement, so I had to step aside to allow them through. And as I did so, the three men looked at me, and one of them said, my God, sir, you're well dressed, you're looking smart today. And the other two sort of, you know, chimed in as well, saying, looking good, looking good. And I just carried on and I thought, oh, it's nice, nice to get a compliment. You know, I was well dressed, so it was well intended. But then as I walked further down the street, um, I passed a young lady. Now, admittedly, she was one of these young ladies who was um, trying to, um, uh, you know, sell you something. I think she was representing a charity and she was trying to engage me in conversation so she could try and, you know, get me to make a donation. But as I approached her, she, her eyes locked on to me and she came right up to me, you know, as an alternative to all the other people in the street and said, excuse me, sir, I just wanted to say you're exceptionally well dressed and could I have a word with you? Now, I know she was using the fact that I was well dressed to sort of profile me as potentially somebody who had money, who could make a donation to her charity. But the fact was her opening gambit was, excuse me, sir, I noticed you were very well dressed. And I thought to myself, wow, you know, this is subliminally affecting people. And I look around and of course, yes, I am the only man in the street in that gaggle of people walking along who's wearing a three-piece suit, who you could arguably describe as being the best dressed man in that group of people. And I thought in two occasions, within perhaps 200 yards of each other, um, people have complimented me on my attire and it's caused an effect. And lo and behold, later that same day, now this is the most startling thing for me, and really nailed home the impact of that suit that I was wearing, which I will now save for special occasions a bit more, I think. But I, I, would, I traveled to another town, maybe 40 miles away, second appointment of the day, and I had a bit of time to kill. So I parked in a car park next to a churchyard. And when I'm in a new town, I often do stroll around the churchyard, it's social history, you know, you get to read what's on the gravestones, it's interesting. Particularly in, you know, very ancient graveyards uh, as we often have in the UK. So I walked into this graveyard and it was a lovely day and I was strolling along and I walked down this path, right? And as I walked along a path, I entered a sort of glade or an open area where there were many more uh, graves. So I'd gone from a pathway into an open area. And as I turned to my side, there was a bench, a wooden bench, on which there were two gentlemen, I'm using the term advisedly, two men sitting on the bench. Now they were um, street drinkers, all right? So they were having a drink in a public place. I'm guessing they may have been homeless gentlemen, whatever they were, I, I wouldn't like to say, but they were having a can of beer sat on a bench in this public graveyard. And as I walked into this open area, obviously, um, they noticed me the same time as I came into their field of vision, and I noticed them too. And the one of them was swearing a bit. I noticed that. I could hear that as I entered the area. And the other fellow saw me first, nudged his associate, sat next to him, and said, watch out, gentlemen. And they both visibly sat up in their chair, uh, in the bench, and they stopped swearing, and they lowered their voice. And I thought to myself, that's the sort of effect I used to have when I would walk into a similar situation when I was a, years ago when I was a police officer, when I was wearing a uniform, a position of authority, and people would react to it. But I thought, I'm just wearing a three-piece suit. And it's had the same effect on these two men. And that made me think, do you know what? Being a well-dressed man has affected their behavior and caused them to modify their language and their posture in the chair towards me. That is akin to a minor superpower. So I've got some tips today which will actually help you to um, decide to be a well-dressed man. Well, my first reason, if you need one at all, for deciding to be an intentionally well-dressed man is the fact that it sets the tone when you meet people. Now, research will suggest that when you meet somebody, 
In the first tenth of a second, your brain, your eyes will weigh up that person and they will make a determination about them. It's the all-important first impression. And if you are well-dressed, if you've gone to the effort, as, as I did the other day of wearing a three-piece suit in a public place, people will make an assumption that perhaps you're a professional, as they did with me. Maybe they'll think, I've got wealth or income which is able to be utilised and they will draw perhaps a more favourable outcome than if I was wearing jeans and a t-shirt. And I'll give you an example of this. So say for instance you're worried about your health and you go to see a consultant physician. You're, um, you know, you go into the hospital and you go to meet them in their office. And that individual is sat in the office wearing a suit. Or maybe they're wearing a white uh, coat with a collar and tie. That is exactly what you expect to see of a man or woman in that position and you feel comfort in the fact that they're dressed in a professional manner. Think of it in another situation though, same situation, you go into that room and that individual is sat there in jogging bottoms and a, and a shapeless t-shirt. What's your first impression? You're thinking, is this man actually the physician? What is his level of competence as a surgeon if this is the way he dresses to meet a new patient? It makes you think, doesn't it? Setting the tone can be so important when building trust and a relationship with anybody, be it friendship, uh, be it uh, just a casual associate in work, um, a client in a situation, or you know even a romantic situation. The way that you dress will set the tone for that relationship going forward. Now my second reason for dressing well is you dress for success. There are numerous research papers out there which underpin the fundamental suggestion that if you dress well, it will have untold improvements to situations that you encounter in life. And one of my favorites is a social experiment undertaken by a famous couture consultant, uh, John T. Malloy, who wrote a great book called Dress for Success uh, in the 1970s and followed it up with a, another book called New Dress for Success, which I own a copy of, which I refer to very often when making these videos. Now in New Dress for Success, uh, Malloy carries out a fundamentally useful experiment in which he tries to prove to us that it's worth wearing a necktie to open doors in life. And in this particular occasion, he employed a 28 year old man and he dressed him up in sort of standard business attire. And on two days, he carried out an experiment. On day one, he took this young man and at rush hour, outside a bus depot, this young man approached people and asked for a donation, telling them that he'd lost his wallet and he was trying to raise bus fare to get home. And on that occasion, he wasn't wearing a tie. At the end of the day, he'd raised $8.42. Okay, proves the point. On the second day, exactly the same situation, same young man, same clothing, same time of day. The only difference is he wore a tie. So the only delineating factor between the two days is he wore a, a tie on day two, no tie on day one. On day two, he raised, and let me be precise, $34.60, more than tripling his income. And the proof in the pudding there is that people feel more inclined, perhaps more safe, perhaps more trusting if you encounter somebody who is intentionally well-dressed and present themselves in that fashion. Certainly proved the point with that experiment. And you can leverage being well-dressed in your life to positive effect be it in social situations, in professional workplace situations, even in romantic situations. Dress for success. Okay, my tip number three for being an intentionally well-dressed man and how you can use it almost as a superpower is the fact that it turns heads in this world these days. Now, a generation ago, you know, dressing up to go out was actually the societal norm. Most men, certainly in my father's era, would have worn a collar and tie and a suit to go out for Friday evening down at you know, the gentleman's club for a cigar and a glass of sherry. However, 
the opposite has happened today. People dress down to go out in social situations. And you know what? That is working to the positive of us well-dressed men. Because if you do wear a collar, a tie and a blazer, as I am today, quite simply well-dressed, nothing fancy, just the very merest of formal clothing, it draws heads and it draws comments. I know this because it happens to me every day. Because I, this is my sort of standard day-to-day -day wear. A blazer or spo sports jacket of some kind, worn with a shirt and tie, nothing fancy, just enough to look smart. But when I go into a, a meeting room, normally with my contemporaries of you know the same social status or professional grade, I'm often the only person who's dressed in this fashion. And people will often say to me, wow, why are you dressed up? You going somewhere? Special occasion today? And the fact is, I always say, no, no, I, I just like to dress well. I like to set standards. And, and this is how you can stand out from the crowd. If you're in a workplace or in a situation where you want to get noticed, you want to be seen for that person who's a go-getter, who wants promotion, who wants more responsibility, who wants to you know, leverage positive relations with clients to greater financial yields from your business accounts. The way to do it is to dress well because it will draw attention, particularly when everybody else in the room is lowering their standards. When you raise yours, it certainly makes you stand head and shoulders above the proletariat. So dress to turn heads. Now my fourth tip is all really about confidence because dressing well will absolutely boost your confidence. I think we all know that feeling when we're going out to a special occasion and we get dressed up and you feel like a million dollars and nothing in the world can touch you and you know your confidence is elevated and you just feel on top of the world. And of course, we can leverage that for all sorts of situations in our lives. Whether we're giving a presentation in work, put on an extra special set of clothing to make you feel more confident. Or maybe you've come to a point in your life where you really want to reinvent yourself. Maybe you've got divorced, or you are coming out of a long-term relationship, or you want to start a new path in your professional life. By changing your clothing, by becoming intentionally well-dressed, it will boost your confidence in every way. You will feel renewed. It's almost like a rebirth. When you put new clothing on, it's such a fundamental part of your personality and your character. It is the way that people visually see you. It is the way that you visually demonstrate to people that you are a smart, well put together individual. So if you want to boost your confidence, absolutely one of the best ways to do it is to change the way that you dress. Become smarter, become more noticeable, become an intentionally well-dressed man. Now my number five tip for deciding to be intentionally well-dressed and to use it as a superpower is to set an example to others. Because I know, right, that when I dress well, people in my orbit, they feel a little bit underdressed, perhaps in my company. So if they know they're gonna meet me next week, we're going to a meeting or maybe a one-to-one -one meeting in work, they might think, Ash Jones is the guy who always wears a collar and tie, right? I don't wanna be seen to be in the room next to him as somebody who looks like a slob. So they might think, I tell you what, I'm gonna wear a shirt with a collar today, or maybe even wear a tie. We are leading the sartorial revolution if we dress well and we wear our clothes with confidence and pride and passion. These are words I use often about sartorial confidence. Because, you know, we're living in a time where so few people make an effort when they get dressed, when they see somebody who does it inspires them, perhaps. It will make them step up their game and follow our leadership to be better dressed individuals. Now, my final tip for suggesting you dress well is the fact that formal clothing, by far, will make you look better. It forgives the flaws which modern athleisure wear certainly does not. Because let's be honest, you know, athletic clothing is generally designed for the younger, fitter body. And when I see jogging trousers and a t-shirt on a middle-aged guy, 
And I'm going to be frank, you know, a middle-aged guy who perhaps isn't in, in good shape, maybe he's got a saggy chest, a protruding stomach, a t-shirt is not your friend if you're not in great condition. They look great when you've got a fit, hard body underneath, but as one gets older and gravity has its way with your body, unfortunately, you know, the t-shirt is something which should be worn under other clothing, perhaps layered to keep you warm, but certainly not as your primary garment in which you demonstrate or display your body to the world. I would suggest that a formal shirt with a collar is going to do you far more favours. A blazer, for instance, all right, the blazer hides so many of our flaws. It accentuates the positives and hides the negatives. The padded shoulders of any formal jacket will generally broaden one's chest. It will make you look more masculine. It will display the taper to the waist. It will hide a protruding stomach. It will frankly make you look much better if you need to hide a few flaws in your clothing whereas you know athleisure wear generally it shows them up yes i know it's more comfortable you know wearing an elasticated waist pair of trousers is absolutely going to be more comfortable you may have to confront the fact that you are no longer a 32 inch waist you know and you might have to buy a pair of trousers that fit you better but you are going to look better and the image that you display to people in this world is going to be so much more improved if you dress well. And as I said, it will have the consequences which I talked about earlier. So there we go, folks. Have I convinced you yet that being an intentionally well-dressed man is akin to having a minor superpower of your own? It happens to me on a daily basis. You know, I find myself in situations where people refer to the way that I dress and make comments about my attire. And for me, these little hints and compliments that I get from people, they boost my confidence. It let me, lets me know that they have noticed I've made the effort. And I think, you know, that's the path that I'm choosing in life, to be the guy who's well known for being well-dressed. I think it's a lot better than being the person who's regarded for looking like a slob in their, you know, joggers all the time. Cut your own path through life, decide what image you'd like to project to others, and I'm sure you will soon have a minor superpower too. Now, if you've enjoyed today's video, it would be uh, an honour if you decided to give this video a thumbs up. And uh, if you'd like to come on the journey with me towards Chap Nirvana, you can click the red button, become a subscriber. If you'd like to practically support the channel, of course, that would be great. And you could do so by buying me a coffee. If you click the buy me a coffee page uh, link in the show notes below, I would be deeply grateful. So until the next time, take care of yourselves. Decide to be your own minor superhero in the way that you dress. But remember, Use your powers for good and not for evil, and the world can be a better place for it. Thank you so much. I will see you again very soon.